So this is our financial justice walking tour for Culture Night in September 22nd. We had a really great turnout this evening, something like I think 60 or 70 people initially. So people really stuck along and again, followed us through the north and the south part of the Docklands and the city. This is the third time we ran this tour. The tour is basically based on this idea of experiential learning, the idea that we can make real abstract concepts like finance and financial justice by bringing people into the spaces where these things are actually taking place and playing out, where these key decisions are being made by actors. Real people make key decisions about tax avoidance, tax dodging and where the burden of debt should land. And that was the motivation for us here today, this evening, and overall it went really, really well, a really enthusiastic group of people. And I know that we'll see them again. The backdrop to this is that you're talking about an Ireland that was full of slums in Dublin especially and uh, tenements, massive emigration, um, extreme poverty and what you had was people moving from the country to Dublin and from Dublin on to work in England or, or, or elsewhere abroad uh, s seeking work. Uh, at the same time though, Dublin was classed as the second city of the British Empire and was a very, very prosperous city. So you had extreme poverty on one hand and you had extreme wealth on the other hand. As depicted in the poem, the burden of rising taxation fell heavily on the shoulders of the many under colonial rule. So while tax dodging and tax exemptions offered to the wealthy few was commonplace, wealthy settlers from England, for example, were enticed to move to Ireland with the promise of little or no tax obligations. And this practice of offering tax exemptions to settlers to establish a political and property owning class across the colonies was used throughout the British Empire. The so-called famine, the starvation didn't happen. It was the catastrophic consequences of political and economic policies that have been exercised in Ireland over many years since the penal laws when the native population of Ireland were deprived of their land forced to hell or to connaught and forced to live on the most meagre amount of land possible. So in a, in a way, starvation was inevitable and it was an inevitable consequence of the policies of that time. I suppose the question we always have to ask is what have we learned from that time? How have we changed? And what is the difference between the laissez-faire economics of that time and the neoliberal economics that we practice today. We know for sure that the consequences are the same. The poor get excluded, the poor die, while wealth and power is concentrated in the centre. In 1987, Ireland's economy was transformed with the creation of 10% low-tax special economic zone called the International Financial Services Centre, the IFSC. The Dublin Docklands used as a strategic development zone for this economic development. That's where we are now. Because of these tax breaks, a lot of FDI, foreign direct investment, was attracted into Ireland, as many multinational corporations chose Ireland as their European and often global base, many here within the IFSC. But there was no reason why this development should have taken place in this area, as financial services don't need access to sea transport. None of their activities involve physical products. Barbados is a country we owe about 17 billion in debt. And the interest rates for the country is between 400 and 600 percent. And it's supposed to be paid between five and 10 years. That's how we get our loans, like looking at IMF, the World Bank, and all the other private bankers and investors. We need the investment. We are doomed if we do, and we are doomed if we don't. That's how the country looks. Now, billions don't make any sense to me. I mean, me and Joe, just ordinary people, we are descendants of former slaves. At the end of the slave era in 1837, we inherited a debt of 4.4 billion. That sounds like a long time ago, right? But we have no other source of income. So we are still trying to service that debt. That's why where we are now. But the debts for the country means it's affecting us individuals. Facebook's main Irish subsidiary, Meta Platforms Ireland, brought in around $30 billion of revenue in 2018, accounting for more than half of the firm's total annual turnover of $56 billion. The Irish subsidiary recorded profits of more than $15 billion in 2018. Of those $15 billion profits, they paid $101 million in tax in Ireland. 
Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google also have their European headquarters here, and this is linked to the rise in data centers in Ireland. We currently have 70 in the country, and they are now consuming 14% of Ireland's metered electricity, which is more than all of Ireland's rural homes put together. This is predicted to rise to 30% of Ireland's electricity by 2030. Like, not even Dr. Evil would go for fucking five trillion. Five trillion dollars is here. Does it look like five trillion? Has anyone been to Canary Wharf or all? Does that look like five trillion? It looks like money, doesn't it? It just saturates money. There's no money because the funds are administered here, they're not managed here. And so they get fees. So what that five trillion that we know about, and that, gets in, and that doesn't talk about the shadow banking system, around half a billion in lawyer fees were generated from handling those contracts in one year alone, and that was 2020. This is a multi-billion industry that, that is based here.